So how was 2022 for you for paramotor flying? For me, it was absolutely spectacular. My first two years were a bit dodgy. and only got nine flights in over those two years, as you can see from my flight log. 2020 was pretty good with 65 hours and I, and I was really determined to get better at flying. And then 2021 was absolutely amazing. But 2022 has been the best year yet. So really, really happy with my flying. February wasn't a lot going on due to the weather. We had some storms. Uh, same for November and December, the weather wasn't great, but the rest of the year has been absolutely great. So it's been quite hard for me to narrow down the top 10 flights of the year. So I'll start at number 10 and go down to number one as my favorite flights. Um, but I've added another two at the end as I couldn't leave those out. And it was really, really difficult actually for me to compile my favorite flights of the year. So with 150 flights in total, I've only included 12 here. And it was really, really hard to uh, narrow it down. Hope you enjoy. This sunset footage you can see here was done in December and it's called Sunset Up Top. So this is the second flight of the year and my longest ever flight at three hours and 15 minutes. Steve Page invited me over to New Farm Airfield in Pittington and we flew west over to pretty much over to the Mulvins. So it was a cold and frosty start but um, the conditions were absolutely spectacular. It was wrapped up warm and this beautiful fog that was um, over the landscape just looked absolutely amazing. This flight was 85 miles in distance in total, three hours, 15 minutes, and thoroughly enjoyed it. So in 2023, I'm gonna try and break the time and distance record that I've set for myself. I'm gonna try and go for 100 miles and three and a half hours. Let's see if I can do that. So at number nine, um, it's my first proper snowy flight. I did have one in 2021, but it was just a light dusting. Uh, we did have about four inches of snow in the Bedfordshire, Cambridgeshire area in England. So um, I took the opportunity to go up and just have a look at the landscape from above on, with the snow on the ground and it looked really great. Really, really enjoyed it. It was below zero on the ground, probably about minus three, but at, at altitude, it was about two degrees. Also close to the winter solstice, so at 3 p.m. we have a lovely sunset. And I hope you enjoy my foot drag landing. Temperature is minus four as we're going flying. So I've got 16 litres of fuel. One of my favourite things to do, apart from flying above the clouds, is to fly to land out somewhere, either go to a pub or a restaurant or meet people. Uh, it's really good to have a purpose to your flight and land somewhere away from where you started from. So Lee got in touch and said, do you fancy a, a bit of an adventure? So um, we landed at a pub and met Paul. And Gary flew from Little Grandson Airfield and met us there. Unfortunately, he was delayed because he's on a trike. Wind conditions were quite strong and gusty, so we had to use speed bar, which is a bit difficult on a trike. Uh, but had a lovely meal, and um, here we are taking off on our homeward leg. Gary had a bit of trouble with the gusts, as you can see below on the trike, but managed to pull it off and get up in the air. And so I had a really, really great trip. So thanks again to Paul for providing us with fuel, for pointing us out to the restaurant. It took us two and a half hours to fly to the pub and only an hour and 15 minutes on the way back. So pretty strong winds, but a really, really enjoyable day despite the cold. Actually, I had a few flights this day. So this is when we, seven of us flew into the Little Granston Air and Car Show. That was great fun to, to land at the air show with all the other planes there on the airfield. This air show is on every year, so if you haven't been, I strongly recommend you go. There's some classic cars as well, and there's some Spitfires, and so there was a Lancaster that flew over. So a really, really good, good event. But the star of the show has to be Ed, who went up and lit some flares uh, at dusk time. 
So here we am flying over Ed at the end of the air show. Wow. So at number six, a few weeks earlier, flew to East Kirkby Airfield from Wingland with Chris and Pete. This was a, an absolutely brilliant day. We spent the entire day at the air show. We had to fly in before the air show started, um, but we had such a great time. So we got to see two Lancasters, the Mosquito, the Hawker Hurricane, Spitfire, and some just amazing planes. A really, really great day. Before we go, Before we go. mind that Lancaster when you take off, yeah? <laughs> Again, what a privilege to get up close to the Lancaster. There's only two or three left in the world now. There are over 4,000 made. So an absolute privilege to be there. So here we are flying back and had a, just an absolutely brilliant day. Really enjoyed that flight. Woohoo! <laughs> Love it! So I'm always on the lookout for new places to fly and Scott and Johnny invited us up to the Peak District where I spent two days flying. This is the first out of the two flights. If you want to see the other one, have a look in my YouTube history. But flew over the, the Dam Busters, again, another Lancaster bomber theme. So we're flying over the Derwent Reservoir and Lady Bower and then down to Chatsworth House over Bakewell and just a, a massive area of the, the Peak District. Pretty much covered all of it in these two flights and uh, had a really great time. The weather was really, really warm. My style of flying is, is cross country, so I really enjoy flying over places I've not been to before. It gets a bit boring after a while flying the same areas, but absolutely loved flying around the Peak District. So this was a fun adventure, flew to a barbecue where Gary had um, spoken to the owners and they said yeah yeah fly in. There's a very very tight field, an extremely tight spot to fly out of. So we're all taking off here, flying over, it's only about 20 minutes, half an hour away from Little Granston Airfield. So we land and we have a really really great uh, barbecue. Gary goes in first on the trike and we all follow, there's six of us and we all manage to land and have a, a really nice dinner. So if you're in the Huntington area in the summer, I heartily recommend you pay them a visit. stayed for an hour and a half or so, had our barbecue, and then four of us um, took off. Two of us didn't make it out. Um, Gary came back in the van and collected the other two and had a really great time. Really enjoyed that. This flight was so good. So this is my birthday, taking off from my local field, flight over to Little Granston Airfield, which is about half hour flight. I land there and wait for George to come over and then he takes me down the Thames in his helicopter. It's absolutely amazing. So I landed at Little Granston, just waiting for George now.
So I had about a two hour flight in the helicopter, took off from Little Gransden, flew straight south um, to Stratford area and then straight down the Thames and towards Heathrow Airport, so down the heli lanes. So I found it absolutely amazing that um, you're allowed to fly down in a single engine helicopter along the Thames and I was even more staggered that we were allowed to fly right past the end of the runway at Heathrow Airport liaising with air traffic control the whole time um, but as you can see an Airbus A350 has just landed and we're just flying along in our helicopter so four of us are going to attempt to fly to 10k we've got Simon here Simon's all wrapped up I'm not sure if this is a wise thing to be doing four layers on it's what 26 degrees 26 degrees on the ground hot sunny <laughs> got my fleece on let's do it Again, this is another thing to tick off my bucket list was to go to 10,000 feet on my paramotor. So I waited for a lovely warm day and four of us went up. There's me, Paul, Wayne and Simon. And we just put the power on and went straight up to 10,000 feet. And it was absolutely spectacular. Not something I'd do very often. It took about 45, 50 minutes to get up to that altitude just just on full power which is probably not very good for the engine to be on that high power for so long but really really good fun ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey. <laughs> so at number one was our holiday in may of 2022 to the dordogne region or the charente region of france uh, not strictly not one flight but um just a week of flying probably about 12 hours worth of flying this week actually had a brilliant time this first flight had a, an engine out flew over this historic village of Brenton uh, but on the way back I was just I went to Wyrdle on my paramotor and I was just kind of waiting and the engine quit on me not too much of a big deal as I'm near the airfield but I can see an aircraft is taxiing down the runway and uh, just hoped that he'd be out of my way when I came into land because there's no way for me to avoid it. It's an emergency. Uh, it, thank it, you. This is going on YouTube. <laughs> oh, no. This is another day that stood out for me on the holiday. Um, just for your re reference, don't set up behind a trike. Give yourself a bit of space. But some spectacular scenery on this day over to Rochoa and over some lakes in the Charente region of France. Just absolutely spectacular day. Really, really enjoyed this one. So on this trip, we got up at sunrise and went for a flight in the morning. Uh, went back, had a bit of siesta, a bit of lunch, and then in the evenings we had another flight. So two flights a day, pretty much. We were very lucky with the weather. There's only one morning where we couldn't fly because of fog, but um, every other morning and evening we, we had a great time, we had really good flights. So on this day we're just scoping out a restaurant so I've heard we've heard that there's a restaurant that we can land at there's the landing zone there so we're just going to have a look to see if there's actually enough space to land Woohoo! oh nearly went over well that was interesting <laughs> Out of 10, what would you give yourself for that landing? Oh, that was a 10. That was Prince, that was Prince Perfect in action. <laughs> That's brilliant. One of my finest. It's probably one of the better ones here, actually, today. It's quite, quite thermic coming in. Oh, <laughs> hey! All his feet. All his feet. So about half of us decide to go for it and land out at the restaurant. And the other half decide that it's a bit too tight. There are power lines, there's a tree, there are trees as you can see, there's a river and uh, buildings around, so it's quite tricky to get in. Definitely can't take off from there. Uh, so the other guys come over in the van and we have a, an absolutely exquisite meal. 
and a few drinks and we get driven back home. So absolutely brilliant day. Really, really enjoyed this one as well. So this was a fun little flight where we take off about an hour away from the farmhouse where we're staying. Uh, fly above the clouds on the way back and land in a field next to the farmhouse and then walk through the village um, back, back to the holiday accommodation. So a really spectacular trip organised by paramotorfrance.com, Mike Chilvers and uh, heartily recommend it. <laughs> I just couldn't leave this flight out. This is number 11 and on the 23rd of July I went down and saw some friends and in the Brighton area and decided to have a lovely flight before I went and saw them. Flew along the coast and then looped back along the north side of Brighton over to Lewis and then over to my old school. I went to Bede School in East Sussex so it was great to be able to see that from the air and how much it's changed. I haven't actually been back for about 20 odd years so it's great to see the, the changes uh, at the school there. And it was quite weird seeing it from the sky. And then over to Eastbourne and Beachy Head and then uh, back to the airfield. So Bobby asked me to take some photos of his airship and arranged for two other airships to come over to Carlington. Carlington has a bit of a history with airships as you can see from the hangars. However it didn't all go to plan. Uh, one of the airships ran into trouble and had to limp back to the shore over the, the lake there and squeeze through some trees to land and the other one didn't even get off the ground. But I had a great time, um, took some lovely photos, so if you want to see those, have a look at the link in the description. Was that fun? Yeah, it's really fun. It's quite dangerous, but it's fun. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, hit the like button, helps other people find the channel. Hope you have a great year of flying in 2023. Thanks for watching and if you want to see the photos have a look at the link in the description. Happy New Year!